What is up, everybody? Welcome to another Phillies episode here with Hunter Doyle, Nate Tussing here, to talk about some Phillies. Uh, a little bit more unique of an episode. We're going to be doing stock up, stock down, um, just evaluating some players that we think have, you know, certainly increased their stock and some players that have certainly decreased their stock. Um, we're recording this right after the Phillies just got swept by the Mets. Um, so that's how far we are into the season. And we'll start off with some highlights since, you know, we've had a rough few games um, with our stock ups. My first stock up player will be D.D. Gregorius. My boy D.D., love the dude, happy we re-signed him. Um, you know, thinking about getting his jersey, the guy's been solid uh, at shortstop. He had a few drops and bobbles here and there, but the guy's been pretty locked down at shortstop, um, and I think that's not going to be an issue for us. But I think what's really been a highlight for him is his hitting. He's batting a 3 310 right now, looking pretty solid. Uh, two home runs, nine RBIs and 13 hits. The guy's just been approaching the plate well. Um, you know, wherever they put him in the lineup, either fifth, sixth, you know, second, third, wherever they put him, he kind of bounces around. I like him more in the in the heat of the deeper lineup at six or five, um, because that, that time people are more on base. Uh, they're in scoring position. He's able to make contact and get the ball moving, uh, get some runs in. Uh, really proud of DG so far. Um, Really, really solid batting, and I think he'll continue to do that. If we look at last year, he was he was on fire the first few games, um, and I think he's going to start off on fire as well and continue that. Um, the second uh, stock up player for me, another no brainer, uh, our boy JT. I picked the two re-signings right there, the two uh, the two people that got re-signed. JT, I mean the dude's insane at the at the plate. Um, he throws at everybody. He keeps the ball in front of him. Solid there. His hitting's been pretty solid too. He's been, a, I think, a two, a three twenty-four. Um, so Didi and and JT are leading the team in batting average. He's got an eight eighty-eight OPS, uh, pretty solid as well. He's got twelve hits, six RBIs. Um, I really like him as well. Doing a little bit more than Bryce, but you know Bryce is still doing his thing. This isn't a trash Bryce episode. Um, so JT doing well at the five four spot wherever they put him. He's had to set out a few games this year. Um, I think that's just due to resting stuff like that. Uh, but Andrew Knapp's fine with, you know, filling in for the meantime. But when JT plays, you see it matters. And I think both of them have a stock up here. Hunter, what about you? What are your stock ups? First, I'm going to go with one in the, another easy one. Gene Segura, um, guy who I have not been a fan of since he became a Philly. But um, he had he had a good uh, 20, pretty good 2019 season. I mean, it was one of his, it was definitely one of his down years as a major league player. But he still, he still had a good year. And last year, I think if it hadn't been a 60-game season, like, he he definitely would have started to heat up. He was heating up at the end of the year, too. Like, I think people forgot. He started really slow last year. Um, and he was also getting moved all around the infield. He's set at second base right now. He looks pretty comfortable there. Um, he's hitting 295. So, he, he's just putting the ball in play. Like, he's just the contact guy. He always – you know, he has a weird stance, but you always know he's going to swap one out um, and get on base. But he's just the Mets killer, too. I mean, every time we play the Mets, this dude is getting hits. The other night he hit a home run. Um, he's got a home run and four ribbies right now. Nothing flashy, but, you know, he gets the job done. Uh, he's come around to, to score four times, too. So um, he's just putting the ball in play, and I like that about him. And the other guy's going to be Reese Hoskins. I know he's been cooling off a little bit lately, but, I mean, before the past – game or two he was he was really off to a hot start I mean he has six doubles already on the year like his new approach his new stance has really worked well ever since Gabe Kapler has gotten out of the building it's been all good for Reese Hoskins so um Reese I mean Gabe just with all those advanced analytics and trying to you know launch angles and stuff come on um so I mean Reese Reese had a really good stretch from like August 10th I think to September 10th ish last year before he got hurt he was really on fire I think he was hitting 290 around that um, so he good to see him doing well thus far this year. I mean, um, when, when Bryce isn't, you know, I shouldn't say that he's before Bryce in the lineup, but having him when Bryce has an off night and just having him in front of Bryce in the lineup to, to get some, some runs in is huge. Um, and then when Bryce or when Reese isn't doing well, then Bryce usually does well. So it's good to have just kind of that, that piggyback off of each other. I'm liking it. He could, could tune down the strikeouts a little bit. He's, he needs to stop swinging and missing, but, um, you know, he's putting the ball in play as well. Not as many walks this year, but again, he's putting the ball in play. So um, those two guys are definitely stock up for me right now. Yeah, they're both doing phenomenal. To my uh, discontent of Gene Segura, I, I got to admit he's playing well. 
um, you know, against, I forget, I think it was the, the Braves. He had the walk off. Um, yeah. He put the bomb play, you know, walk off single right. there. Um, he puts the bomb play. He makes contact. That's all that we can ask for. You know, if, if a mm-hmm. player's there, that's unfortunate, but it's so much better than striking out. Um, Hunter and I both picked someone that's a surprise to us this year. Um, someone that's on the stock up as well. And that's Connor Brogdon. Hunter knows the guy a little bit more than me. So I'll let you, uh, you know, just give you a little example of, you know, what, where he is and what's he, what's he doing. Well, I mean, I can just speak to his resume. I mean, I didn't watch him much before he came into the big leagues, but this guy was like very consistent everywhere he went in the minor leagues, like whatever level he played at, he just got the job done. Um, last year he struggled in his debut, but he really figured things out. And this year, I mean, five games, no runs given up. Um, and just, you know, he has a hold too in the later innings. He is just getting the job done. Like he is so reliable when called upon. He's a typical, you know, kind of taller pitcher at six foot six. And I just, I just really am feeling confident when he comes in the game, he's hitting his spots. Um, I like what he's doing. What do you think, Nate? Yeah, I, I'm really, I mean, he's leading the team in wins right now. So, I mean, how much can you trash him? Um, <laughs> he's great with the ball placement. Um, if I'm not, mistaken he he throws in the upper 90s um his yeah. fastball is is pretty fast um he's a great different you know he's a he's a situational pitcher um i like how he is placed in the phillies i wish they would use him more him and archie bradley um you know were definitely big highlights and with bradley you know being sidelined for a while connor brogdon's really going to have to step up here um, but i really like him the opponent batting average is a 167 so they're not hitting the ball much he's allowed three hits the guy is really phenomenal, and who would have thought that pitching uh, would be one of our highlights? Well, at least he would be one of our highlights for pitching. <laughs> right, yeah, did not expect that. However, there is an upside. There was always a downside. There is certainly a lot of downside on the Phillies. Um, I'll start us off with uh, this. This hurts. This hurts, but my first stock down is Andrew McCutcheon, and Sad. as much as – it, it pains me to say it. The guy is not batting that well. Um, he's at a 139 batting average, 557 uh, OPS. His on-base percentage isn't even that good at 279. Last year, he started off a lot better, um, mm-hmm. and he was just batting differently. He, was, uh, he wasn't getting as many hits or as runs because that's not what you do at first at bat. You just get on base. He's not doing that as much this year. His strikeouts are at an all-time high. He is getting walks, though. He's got seven walks so far, so not terrible. He's definitely still, you know, getting on base once in a while. But um, I'm going to need to see more out of touch, uh, bring that strikeouts more. His last few games, while he's gone 0-3, 0-4, they haven't been strikeouts. They've all been putting the ball in play. So I like to see that, that he's swinging the bat. Unfortunately, it's just not going the places he wants. Um, And, you know, he's not getting much many people on base except for Zach Wheeler who's always on base when Cutch comes off the bat uh you know can always count on Zach but I need to see more from Cutch hope hoping that this isn't his last year um my la- my second stock down um may not be one of the worst players on the team but I think as this player's his you know his consistency it's been on the lower level which is Aaron Nola um the guy certainly is a great pitcher but uh he's he struggles here and there um, a few bad pitches and, you know, and I, I, we see it time and time again, last year we saw with Aaron Nola, you have a great outing, no hitter, you know, no a shutout through six innings, 12 strikeouts. Then the last inning he pitches is where it goes down a two run homer, a double, and then a, you know, a, another double or something like that. He, 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 he doesn't have the, the end juice to get him through, you know, those last few innings. So unfortunately for Aaron Nola, you know, a three, four, five isn't a bad ERA. I'm not, you know, like I said, he's not bad overall, but just with his consistency, I, I think there's a bit of stock down due to him not being able to close out his starting performance. Hunter, what about you? Yeah, well, I think both of those guys can turn it around. I think Kutch is especially mm-hmm. going to turn it around. Um, Nola, I just worry about September. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, oh, yeah. the guys, the guys who I picked, I have pretty much no faith for them to turn around if I'm being honest. Um, Matt Moore, first of all, coming off a strong spring, looked like he was maybe um, ready to kind of rejuvenate his career, revive his career. Obviously you can't base all of it off of spring training, right? Like, you know, it's spring training. You're not pitching a full, a full game. Your workload is reduced and you're not always going up against major league guys. You're going up against some guys who are trying to make a roster. 
but still it was encouraging to see that. And I thought he would at least like do decent. I had some cautious optimism. I wasn't fully confident. I was fully prepared for a letdown and that's what happened. Um, he is averaging 19 pitches per inning. Um, he's thrown 154 pitches and eight in the third innings. So his pitch count is going up. He's allowed 13 hits and seven runs and two home runs in those eight and eight and a third innings. Um, <laughs> Not good. Not what you want to see from your fourth starter. And you also don't want to rush Spencer Howard up. But if hitters are going to hit 361 off of Matt Moore, you're going to have to think about it at some point. So Spencer Howard, uh, I, I don't think he's ready yet. Um, I think he pitched the other night, but uh, I, I think he needs more time. Um, I'm glad they did end up keeping him down, but Matt Moore does not look like a number four pitcher right now. And Chase Anderson is, you know, probably as expected as pitching better than him. The other guy I have has one hit on the entire season. <laughs> one hit. He has one hit. He's hitting .050 right now. His on-base percentage is 208. His slugging percentage is .050. His OPS is 2.58. That is that is pretty bad. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, he also got thrown out trying to steal third base because he you know he thought the ball went over the third baseman's head so if he can't guess by now it's roman quinn who has 10 strikeouts he has 10 strikeouts and 20 at bats <laughs> he's striking out once every two at bats i mean this is terrible i don't know how you can continue to keep this guy up in the major leagues i i don't know what i'm kind of speechless on how terrible he has been it's disastrous he had a solid spring um, and now Hazley has gone for personal reasons. Prayers up for him. Don't know what's going on, but I hope everything, you know, gets sorted out with him. Um, hope he takes as much time as he needs. But, I mean, Mickey Moniak, let's hope he can do something because Roman Quinn obviously can't. So, um, Roman Quinn, I've always thought he was – I've said this like a million times. I thought he was a defensive replacement slash pinch runner. I love him in both of those roles, but – he is not, he is not a good hitter. Um, he's almost a guaranteed out at this point, like Nate was saying um, to me off, off stream. So, yeah. you know, this guy, this guy needs to be sent down in my opinion. Um, and I, I don't think Odubel Herrera is going to be called up because I think the front office doesn't want the bad rep. I don't know why they would have brought him. Well, I, actually there was a rule to the, bringing him back. Um, they had to bring him back, but I don't think he's going to get sent down. So I think we're stuck with Roman Quinn right now. So, you know, not, not looking good. Um, sorry for the little rant on Roman Quinn. I'm just kind of in awe of how this guy is still playing in the major leagues right now. I know it's early, but this is really bad. So, yeah. One thing about Roman Quinn, well, two things, actually, the first one is that he has more career stolen bases than he does RBIs, um, <laughs> which is, I think it's evident that he's a good runner, but not much else. Um, you know, I, he's a great guy. I, I it's yeah, so sad he's that a good he has guy. such a gift. He's got such a gift in speed, but they can't, but he can't get on base to use it, you know. He could be a wide receiver. Uh, and the second, yeah, he can be. He can play wide receiver exactly. You know, he'll be a deep threat. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, this will lead into our next uh, thing. He actually has a um, a lower ERA than our next stock down pitcher, which is <laughs> none other than Vince. Why is he still on the team, Velasquez? Uh, I will start it off because I know Hunter has plenty of words for this man. Um, I will just start it off by saying, Vince Velasquez, you suck. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can't else justify because... it. You're a horrible pitcher. He's, he does this every year. He changed his number. Oh, he's going to be great. He did. He, <laughs> I he forgot he changed pitch. his number. Oh, he's gonna, yeah. He did all these things to keep, the, keep him in. You know, he's a leech. He sticks on the team, whatever he needs, but he never actually helps the team. The guy last year, I remember the first pitch or the first um, game he started, he didn't do bad. The first two innings, not bad. And then boom, we lost the game because of it. It's it's how it is with Vince Velasquez. He's a pickoff the master, that's, but that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. If we want <laughs> someone to pick off, we'll bring him in for not even an at bat. We'll just try and pick off someone and then we'll replace <laughs> him for, to actually pitch because the guy cannot pitch. His control is horrible. He has horrible pitch selection batters are eating off of him hunter take it away before i implode from anger <laughs> <laughs> i mean this guy has given up four runs and one and two-thirds of an inning so far funny enough all five of his outs are strikeouts um very typical vince velasquez there he's thrown <laughs> he threw 49 pitches <laughs> 49 
49 oh, in that one and, a, one and two thirds innings. That comes out to 40 pitches per inning. 40 pitches. This is why he wasn't a starter because he his pitch count will be through the roof through the fourth <laughs> and fifth innings. And like you said, Nate, he, he has no command. He has absolutely no command. Somehow he has been on the roster for the past, was it four, five, six years now? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, he was good. He was good his first year here. I think that was more so pitchers didn't know his tendencies and he just blew it right by yeah. him. Because they didn't because they were guessing. And you know, you get bad fast what Vince Velasquez is a pretty good velocity for a starter. So they were guessing. Um, he also had a few injuries and um, and now he's been healthy for quite a bit now. This is this is disgusting that he is on a major league roster right now. I thought the team, you know, they paid him enough money where you had to keep him in the bullpen. Um, but it's getting to a point where it, I don't even care about the contract. I don't care anymore. Get this dude out of here. It's it's the Nick Pavetta story all over again. Um, Pavetta, I think, was worse because he would he wouldn't even go to the fourth or fifth. He would just give up ten runs in the first inning. Um, but anyway, when we're talking about Vince Velasquez yeah. here. Um, Vince Velasquez is one of the last Kapler Klentak players we need to get out of the building ASAP. So hey, I'm I'm done with him. I've had it. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are. It's it's beforehand. It was like you know we'll keep him on for the for the for the salary, but not even the Phillies want him to you know to pitch because he he gets very he, he pitched that one game and that's it. They know the dude sucks. So why is he still on the team? At this point, he's just taking up a spot on the on the roster. We could have yeah. someone like uh, Ramon Rosa, who's not terrible, or Ranger Suarez, you know? Some good people that yeah. could be brought up that when, I think would not have a 27 ERA. Yeah, when Archie comes back, we could keep Romero up here, who just got called up. That's and true. Said, I did we need, he just got called we, up. We need, we need a couple lefties. I mean, we have – I think it's Alvarado is the only lefty in the bullpen. Maybe mm-hmm. there's one more. Yeah, yeah. I'm forgetting, but – I mean, you need a couple lefties in there. So keep JoJo up, honestly. Let's see what he got. Yeah. And then even when Sir Anthony comes back, whenever that is, he's going to need a spot. And um, yeah. I think Pavetta, or not Pavetta, I think the last guy should be the first to go. It shouldn't be anybody else. He's going to blow more games than anybody else. And he only pitched one game. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. But unfortunately, he's still on the roster. Uh, so is Roman Quinn. I think Roman Quinn. Um, might need to go down to the minors to, I don't even know. I don't think there's much yeah. turning around. Like you said, there's really no turning around for these players. Certainly not Vince Velasquez. The dude's career is behind him. Yeah. And he's 28. He thinking of, yeah. He needs to get it together, which he won't. And so we need to get him out of here. We need to pull Nick Vetta and get him out of this team for good, because yes. my goodness, we drop him down to the minors and then we send him off. That's what we're yeah. looking for. Fun, fun like little that. fact, um, Michael Franco hit a home run off of Nick Pavetta uh, in a game recently. Um, Pavetta still had a pretty decent start, but I thought that was just hilarious. Two, yeah. two former awful Phillies um, going at it against each other um, on different teams. So. Oh, yeah. Doing, <laughs> doing what they do best. He probably struck out the next step at Franco did, but he <laughs> hit a home run. And it's like 50 feet in the dirt, too. <laughs> It bounces before it gets to the point. Yeah, oh, that's guys, a Michael Frank move. But anyway, mm-hmm. thank you guys yeah, for watching. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, mm-hmm. this is our new. We're just doing different types of episodes, seeing if you guys like these stock up, stock down. If you do like them, um, you know, like the video, comment who your stock up, stock down people are. Uh, maybe they're. I don't know. Maybe you think Cutch is a stock up. Who knows? Maybe you think Bryce Harper's <laughs> a stock down. Hopefully, no. I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much again for the support. We're gonna try and get you more Phillies content. Um, because the Phillies are interesting. Um, we're going to get more Sixers content, more draft content. It's coming. Um, so make sure to turn on notifications if you want, subscribe, like the video. And yeah, anything else, Hunter? No, I think that's all, all I had to say. I've got my everything off my chest. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We, this is a good event. Uh, so thank you guys so much. And you guys have a good one. We'll see you in the next video. See you guys. Peace.